What is the Catholic Church? Why is there a Pope? This is, A Catholic Speaks, and today, we are exploring the Catholic Church, the largest Christian denomination in the world. For that, let us go back to the time of Jesus. During the last three years of his life on earth, Jesus went around Judea, preaching that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. During this time, he selected twelve men as his disciples, and trained and taught them, so that they could continue with his mission, even after he was gone. Jesus established a church, the body of his followers, where his mission will be accomplished. He entrusted this church to his disciples, and gave them the authority. Jesus established this church, not for a short period, but to last till he comes again. He promised that he would be with us until the end of ages. He gave a special place to Peter as the leader of this community, and promised that the gates of hell cannot stand against the church. And this church was inaugurated on the day of Pentecost, the fiftieth day after the resurrection of Jesus, when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples of Jesus and his mother Mary. About three thousand people were baptized on that very first day. In the Bible, we do not see apostles leaving the church abandoned after them. Instead, they taught and trained people of God, left oral and written teachings and traditions, and moreover, consecrated the next leaders of the church, by laying hands on them, so that the apostolic authority was passed on to the next generation. The Catholics believe that the church Jesus established, is the Catholic Church, due to several reasons. Before we look at these reasons, let us look at what the Catholic Church is. A popular term used today to refer to the Church, is the Roman Catholic Church. However, the prefix Roman, is not completely accurate to refer to the Universal Church. The Western or Roman Church, is only one among 24 churches in the Catholic Communion. To define, the Catholic Church, is the body of Christians, in communion with the Bishop of Rome. Being the apostolic successor of Saint Peter, the Bishop of Rome also called the Pope, is the leader and symbol of unity for this Christian Church. There are 24 independent churches in this communion from various ethnic and liturgical traditions, but hold on to one, holy, Catholic and apostolic faith. There are four characteristics of this church. Number 1. The church is one. Jesus established only one church. St. Paul says, there is only one faith, one Lord, one baptism. The Catechism teaches that the church is one for three reasons. Firstly, the Church is one, because of her source, the Most Holy Trinity, is the communion of three persons, yet one God. Secondly, the Church is one because of its founder Jesus. She is the mystical body of Christ, and his one and only Bride. We all partake in one bread and one cup, the flesh and blood of Jesus. Thirdly, the Church is one, because of the one Holy Spirit that animates her. For many Protestants, this oneness, or unity of the Church, is the invisible unity of the Christians. However, for Catholics, this unity is both, visible, and invisible. For Catholics, it is impossible to rule out the visible unity of the Church, because that was what Jesus intended it to be, when he established his Church. In his solemn priestly prayer before his arrest and crucifixion, Jesus asked his Father. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one just as you Father are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them, even as you loved me. Here, Jesus wants his church, the body of his followers, to be united perfectly as one, just like his Father and him are one. And Jesus wants this unity to be visible, so that the world may come to believe in him. Today's world of thousands of churches and non-denominational Christians, visibly divided but claiming to be united spiritually, was definitely not the vision of Christ for his church. That is why the Catholics value the unity of the church, as a paramount quality for the last 2000 years, and this unity is exercised visibly through the communion with the Bishop of Rome, the successor of Peter, on whom Jesus established his church. Number 2. The Church is Holy. This may be the hardest one as we see the church turmoiled in scandals and controversies throughout history. However, we believe that the church is holy, not because the members of the church are holy, but because the church is the mystical body of Christ, and she is the bride of Christ. She is holy because she is animated by the same spirit of Jesus. As such, the Bible says, she is the holy unblemished bride of Christ. And by virtue of the spirit who sanctifies, the Bible calls the members of the church, saints. 
Does this mean that all deeds of the members of the church are holy? No, not at all. Even in the Bible, we see problems in the church. It is these problems that motivated several letters in the New Testament. Even St. Paul says that he struggled to do the right things all the time, in his letter to the Romans. The human nature of the church is full of imperfections, because we are all sinners and imperfect vessels of God, but the divine nature of the church is holy, because of our Holy Redeemer. Even in the midst of these imperfections, the church spreads the holiness of Christ in this world, through her teachings and sacraments. The church continues Jesus' mission, by sanctifying the believers who follow Christ. Number 3. The church is Catholic. The word Catholic in Greek means universal. The church is the universal body of Christ. From the earliest time on, the church was called Catholic. The earliest reference of the word Catholic, to refer to the Church of Christ, is by St. Ignatius of Antioch, in his letter to the Smyrnaeans, written in AD 110, around the time when the last book in the Bible was written. Ignatius was a disciple of St. John the Apostle, and Bishop of Antioch. He writes, where there is Christ Jesus, there is the Catholic Church. Since that time, both the words, Catholic, and Christian, were used together as an unbreakable whole. Jesus founded one church for the whole world, where there is no separation between Jew or Gentile, Greek or Roman. It is this church, that is present in all tribes and nations, proclaiming the risen Christ in all tongues. She is universally present for the last 2,000 years. Number 4. The Church is Apostolic. Jesus founded his church on the apostles. He gave them authority to bind and loose on earth, to teach and forgive sins. Apostles handed down this authority to the next generation through the laying of hands. We see that in the writings of the New Testament, and other writings of the early Christians. On several occasions, the New Testament talks about apostles ordaining others, to bishops, priests and deacons, by laying hands over them. Outside the Bible, one of the earliest references, is in the first letter of St. Clement, who was the fourth bishop of Rome, written in AD 95. He expressed the view that bishops succeeded the apostles in the letter. This is the viewpoint, that is ubiquitous in the early Christian writings from the time of the Apostles. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, in his letters, writes that he didn't see any local church, without the three tire apostolic offices of, bishops, priests, and deacons, during his journey from Antioch to Rome. In his letter to Trallians, he writes that without these three offices, we cannot have a church. Today, we see these three offices present in Catholic and Orthodox churches. Each and every bishop in the Catholic Church can be traced back to one of the Apostles. This direct unbroken line of succession between the Apostles and today's Catholic bishops is termed, the Apostolic Succession. It is through this line of succession, the Catholic bishops get their authority. You may be able to find the line of succession of your local bishop on the website, www.catholic-hierarchy.org. We see all of these four characteristics present in the Catholic Church, the largest and oldest Christian church in the world. The early church was undeniably Catholic. Today, Catholics believe that the Catholic Church is the church founded by Christ and his apostles. It is in this church we find the visible unity of Christians for the last 2,000 years. From the very beginning, Christians understood the role of the Church of Rome in Christian unity. Saint Ignatius of Antioch talks about the Church of Rome presiding over in love, and Saint Irenaeus wrote, for it is a matter of necessity that every church should agree with this church, that is the Church of Rome, on account of its preeminent authority. The Catholic Church, which is in communion with Rome, is the true universal church, that embraces the people of all nations, tribes, tongues, and colors. The Church makes her members holy through the holy sacraments, passed on to us through the apostolic faith and tradition. The Catholic Church evangelized Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Americas, bringing forth the light of Christ in the world. Throughout history, the Church has been involved in numerous social and political movements, including the abolition of slavery, the civil rights movement, and the fight against poverty and inequality. Today, the Catholic Church is the largest non-governmental provider of education and medical services in the world. Nevertheless, as Jesus promised, the Church and her universal faith are constantly under attack from other Christians and non-Christians alike. And yet, the Church remains a source of inspiration and hope, for 1.3 billion people around the globe. So, if you want to be where Christ wants you to be, be Catholic. Here, 
you will find the perfect communion, true and complete means of salvation, and fullness of truth. And, let us pray for the unity of Christians. Lord Jesus Christ, at your last supper, you prayed to the Father, that all should be one. Send your Holy Spirit upon, all who bear your name and seek to serve you. Strengthen our faith in you, and lead us to love one another in humility. May we who have been reborn in one baptism, be united in one faith under one shepherd. Amen.